Well, hey friends, welcome back to the Clinical Entrepreneur Podcast. As usual, I'm here hanging out with you today. Uh, I am excited about our topic today. I'm always excited about the topic, but I want to say first a big, huge shout out to those of you who are super faithful. Listen, I get emails and feedback from you all the time about how much you love the podcast and you binge it. And I'm so grateful and thankful for that. And if you haven't, would you do me a favor? If you haven't yet left a review it really helps me know that you're out there, you're listening, you're loving what you're hearing. Just take a minute and leave a review wherever you're listening to this podcast. If you're on listening on an app, your favorite app, like iTunes or Stitcher or iHeartRadio, wherever you might be listening, I would really appreciate that. That helps so much. All right. Today we are going to talk about marketing. And I recently realized that uh, I have kind of a big gaping hole in some of the content that I'm providing for you on the podcast. And I thought I better up my game a bit. So uh, Jamie and I were quite appalled that I had missed this topic largely. And so I'm going to just spend some time giving you some information about marking, especially since it's one of the number one, I'll, I'll say complaints, but you know, sticking points, I guess in wellness practices is that uh, very often doctors, practitioners don't know how to market. Now, first of all, let me set the record straight and say that marketing is not a, just a one-stop shop, meaning you can't just say, oh, well, how do I market my practice? Listen, friend, there are so many ways that you can get the word out there about your practice. There's so many ways. You've got Google Business Profile, formerly GMB, right? Google My Business. They changed the name. Why do they have to do that? So there's uh, GBP, now we call it. You've got social media, which in my opinion is important, but it's also the long game. Okay, you play the long game there. It's not the short game. You've got local events. You've got your website is a huge part of your marketing strategy. The way that you treat your patients, the way that you onboard them, the way that you create an exceptional customer experience, those are all parts of a marketing, kind of a marketing plan or a marketing strategy. So to think that you're going to just sit down for, you know, 10 minutes or an hour and create this marketing strategy is... Yeah, no, not going to happen. It has to be very well thought out. You want to consider what is your end goal? What and who you are you talking to? And that I think is the one of the most important things that you can get clear on right away is who are you speaking to? So the analogy that I like to use before I get into the content for today's uh, show, but the analogy I like to use is this. If you were standing in a crowded room, and you just said, hey, everyone, I'd like to help you improve your health. I can do it naturally. What? What the heck did you even just say? I'm not even going to listen to you. I'm not going to pay attention because what I heard was wah, 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 wah. Nobody cares that you can improve health. Now. Nobody cares. Newsflash. But then if you're in that same crowded room and you say, uh, Hey, Mary, I know how painful it is when you've, you know, dealt with infertility or whatever it is. Uh, you've been dealing with infertility. I know that disappointment that happens every month when you, you know, take that pregnancy test or you start your period and, you know, another month went by and there's no chance for a baby for another 30 days. And I get that. And I just want you to know that I want to help you. And I know how to help you all of a sudden. That was just, I just made that example up, but you get my point all of a sudden. Now you don't need the attention of the whole room. The rest of the people in the room are talking and chatting and whatever, but whose attention did you get? You got the full on attention of every woman in that room. First of all, Mary, because you called her by name, but anybody else who hears the word infertility, Here's the word disappointment. Here's the word no baby for another 30 days. Here's the word negative pregnancy test. Here's the word. All of a sudden, all those ears are like, Ooh, what's she talking about? What's she talking about? I, I need to know. We're talking about pregnancy, fertility, pregnancy test. That's me too. And now <clears throat> all of a sudden your message, when it's crystal clear like that, it doesn't matter that all those other people aren't listening because they're not your people. But the clearer you get, about who you want to serve, that will radically impact your marketing strategy. So little rabbit trail there for you, but 
get clear about that. There are, I've got other episodes about how to attract your, how, how to identify your niche, et cetera. So I will link those in the show notes. But for now, what I want to talk about is a very specific part of your marketing strategy that's very often overlooked. And I understand why I get it, but I'm going to give you some guidelines some parameters, some ideas, and make this podcast super actionable for you. So unless you're driving, go grab a notebook and a pen, hit pause for a second, go get something to write down because you're going to need to write these notes down. Are you ready? Here we go. What I want to talk to you about is how to include as part of your marketing strategy, a very specific lead magnet. Okay. Let's first define what a lead magnet is. A lead magnet is something that is a magnet, i.e. it attracts people to you. It attracts the right type of people to you, i.e. those leads. So it's a something, which I'm going to go over in a minute, but it's something that your ideal patient wants, needs, or, you know, will serve a purpose for them, right? Solve a problem for them. Now, you can't create a lead magnet until you know who you're talking to. This would be like standing in that room saying, hey, everyone, I have this really great um, PDF and it's about how to paint your house with organic paint. Well, what? Nobody's even, know what? That does, solve, does not solve the problem for really anyone except maybe a half a person in that room. I mean, nobody's listening. So that lead magnet has to be something that solves the problem. So for example, with this fertility uh, person that I gave you this example, right? You're speaking to your ideal audience's fertility. I picked that because I love working with fertility patients. But anyway, uh, you want to pick something that's going to solve a problem for them. It's something you give them for free, okay, keyword there, free, in exchange for their email. So you get their email. And then they get your resource. Now, why is that important? Well, because with that email, you can then begin to send them emails about what you do and value that you provide and helping them have a healthy pregnancy or here are three things you need to prepare for postpartum. These are the five herbs you need to have on hand right after delivery to help with bleeding and healing, whatever that it is that you're going to do. But now you've got an idea, you know who you're going to serve. So let's start there. You've, you know who you're going to serve. You know who your ideal patient is, your niche, your audience. You've got that clear. I know that's a big one for a lot of you. You need to go back and listen to the other podcasts and I'll explain in more detail. But you've got that super clear. All right, we're good there. So that's number one. Number two, then I want you to write down, this is where your paper comes in. I want you to write down five problems that your ideal patient struggles with. Okay, I want you to write those down. Those five problems are going to be, we're going to hope that uh, they can be a springboard that'll help you create a lead magnet. All right, I'm going to, we're going to, we're going to dive into this a little bit at a time, I promise. So what I want you to do is write down those five problems. So let's just say for our fertility example, that she is, uh, she's struggling with getting pregnant. That's an obvious, right? So five reasons you may not be able to get pregnant. Well, every fertility person is going to want that, right? It's a great lead magnet. You should write that down, your fertility. That was actually quite brilliant. So five reasons you may not be able to get pregnant. Or you might want to say, what else might she worry about? Like, think about that. What else is she worried about? She's worried about what, what she needs to eat in her diet. How does she have a healthy baby? So you might want to say, you know, five foods you must avoid during pregnancy. Now, if you notice... I've got a little bit of a negative slant on these titles. And there's a reason for that. You don't always have to do that. But if I put five foods for a healthy pregnancy, great. But if I said five foods you must avoid at all costs during your pregnancy, which one would you be most likely to read? It's just human nature. We want to avoid pain. We want to stay safe. So we want to know about the things that could hurt us or harm us. So you may give the exact same information in both of those examples, but it's just the way that you title it. So we're going to say she, she wants to know how to feed her body so she can have a healthy baby. How about uh, how to create a uh, delivery plan? Like, how, you know, your delivery plan. How do you want to have your baby? Do you want a water birth? Do you want an at-home birth? Do you want a doula? Do you want music? Do you want essential oils? Do you want tea? Do you want a foot rub? What do you want? So how to create that? Maybe they want to know that. So you get the idea. You just want to write down five things that they 
may want to know or things that they're struggling with, questions that they have, like how do I feed my baby and how do I create a birth plan? And, you know, what do I do if I can't nurse afterwards? Or how do I keep from tearing? Whatever it is, okay? You're going to write down those five things. Now, you have to decide how you're going to give it to them. And there are a bunch of ideas that I'm going to give you right now. So just, you don't have to write them all down, but I want you to write down the ones that you're, you know, when you listen to what I'm going to say, just like the ones that make your heart go, oh yeah, that sounds like a good one. Just write those down. Cause you can always come back and listen to the episode later. So number one, you can give them some kind of a cheat sheet. So a cheat sheet is anything, some guy, some, something that will give them shortcuts Okay, here are the shortcuts. And it could be almost like a resource of sorts or like a toolkit of all the things that they're gonna need on hand. These, here's a list of 10 things or 15 things you'll need to have on hand at the hospital or your place for in order to be ready to have your baby. So you wanna give them a cheat sheet, something that's like a checklist or a cheat sheet, sort of the same thing. Could be a resource guide. Okay, you might you might go to Amazon and grab some links and put together a resource guide. Here's a resource guide for my favorite organic baby clothes, or this is a resource guide for the non-toxic products you're going to want in your house to avoid uh, excess toxicity for you and the baby, et cetera. Here's a list of um, herbs you want to avoid during pregnancy, or here's a list of foods you must have, whatever it is. So that's a, that resource guide, that checklist or cheat sheet, that sort of thing. You could give them a calendar, you can give your use a calendar. This would be like a food planning calendar or a shopping calendar or a calendar of what's happening. I wouldn't do a calendar of what's happening in your office because nobody cares. That's not solving a problem. So a calendar could be an idea, some kind of a plan, like I talked about a birth plan. So if you wanted to create this lead magnet, here is a here is a formula or a template for creating your birth plan. You could do that. How about recipes? Recipes are always a home run. My five favorite recipes that help ease morning sickness or five recipes that will help you when you feel, uh, when you got the munchies and the cravings and you don't want to reach for the sugar, but you want something sweet. Here are my five recipes that will not only help you, but they'll feed you and the baby. That was wordy, but you get my point. You can do a toolkit of some kind, kind of goes along with the like resource guide, but some kind of a link to like an Etsy shop or your favorite places for self-care or a gua sha stone or, you know, something like that. Just a toolkit. Think of what kind of tools could you give your ideal person that would help them solve a problem, right? You know, get an answer to a question that they have. That's what you're after. Don't make one, a toolkit that's like, here's how organic ways to garden for your fertility patient, because she doesn't care. So make sure that it's appropriate for the person that you're speaking to. Do you see why it's really important that you know your ideal patient first? Super important. What about uh, an educational video? You could do that. You could just create a video that maybe shows them how to make whatever kind of food or shows them how to do some kind of stretching or work on the ball to open up the pelvis before delivery. So some kind of an educational video, Women love that. And don't, whatever you do, if you're going to give that educational video as a lead magnet, for Pete's sakes, my friend, do not put it on YouTube for free. This needs to be behind a gated wall. In other words, the only way you can get this video is by signing up, getting it in exchange for their email. Uh, the other thing you can do is an email course. I've had lots of doctors that I've worked with over the years that have done that. And they've done like a a preparing for baby course, and it might be a five email. It's delivered via email, and it's just written out in an email. Nobody gets this email series unless they've opted in. So it's a little course, but it's delivered by email. You could do that as a video in your email, links in the in the email to your video. You could just create videos. So email and video is a great way to deliver your material. Then you can do a giveaway. You could, you know, do some kind of a giveaway for a free pregnancy consultation, enter here to win and make it worth, you know, 500 or $800, put some good value in it, make it really worth it for them. Kind of a no brainer for them to sign up, right? They want to get in your giveaway. You can also do a challenge. I've done challenges. I love challenges because it helps walk the person from one day to the next to the next, do like a four day or a five day challenge. And it just helps them get a result at the end. So what is it that they're struggling with? Back to the birth plan. You're going to walk them through how to create a birth plan. That's all. It's really simple for you, but you just one day you give them this 
assignment to do. And then the next day they do the next thing. And the next day they do the next thing. That's how a challenge works. You can do a how-to guide. You could do a mini training of some kind that's usually delivered via email or video. Um, you could also offer a free consultation. You could just do that as your lead magnet, like a free consult, a free one hour consultation with me or a free 15 minute consult, whatever you want to give away. There are so many ideas of things that you can create with a lead magnet. Now, before you get overwhelmed, because I can feel it, you're, that was a lot of talking right there. I know. Okay, we're going to take a big breath. All right, now, it doesn't have to be that hard. It's really not that hard. So you're just going to first identify your ideal patient. That's number one. Number two, you're going to decide what problem you're solving for your ideal patient. Number three, you're going to decide how you want to deliver the solution to that problem, i.e., via email or a checklist or a cheat sheet, like what, how do you want to package that solution? And then all you have to do is get it on your website, start talking about it on social media. I have doctors that I work with that even run ads. They'll run like Facebook or Instagram ads to this lead magnet. And they might pay, you know, a few pennies or a dollar or two per lead, but it's worth it to them to get a faster you know, generation of those leads into their world. But remember, the, the key is we don't want more. The number of leads we get isn't as important as the fact that they're qualified leads, meaning they're all fertility patients. I don't need a 50-year-old man opting into my lead magnet. And he might if it's gardening tips because he just retired and he wants to garden. I don't, I don't want, he, he's not my person. My person is a fertility patient. So I want to make sure that my lead magnet is appropriate for that fertility patient. Does that make sense? So you want to make sure that your lead magnet is like everywhere. It's on your Facebook page. It's on your website. It's on your social. It's everywhere. Everybody knows that if they want to know more about you, they got to get on your list. And here's what I'm going to give you in exchange. Lead magnets are one of the best ways to start kind of, if you think about like a funnel, you think of a funnel, we want to get people into that funnel, get them into your practice, but we want the qualified leads. So it should be information only you can provide for your patients. That's all. So the best lead magnets, they are going to offer some kind of expert insight, like something that you, only you know about. They're going to give some kind of insider knowledge, like you work with fertility patients. So therefore, you know, the foods, the things they need to do, the stretching they need to do, how to set them up for success, et cetera. They need to know your insider knowledge or your expert advice. They, these lead magnets need to give them a quicker, faster way to get something done. So like the birth plan or the five, here are the, the 10, the, here's the three foods that you need to get in your diet every day during your entire pregnancy. So, you know, you might say egg yolks, you might say, you know, butter, and you might say like good sources of clean animal protein, whatever you want to do, the three things that have to be in your diet every day. That is something that helps them solve a question they might have, like, how do I eat? And you're just saying, here are the three things you need to eat every day. She goes, oh, okay, good. That's easy. I don't need some big elaborate meal plan because she's busy. She just wants to know. So you've solved the problem. You've helped her get from point A to point B faster. And then lastly, make it creative and unique. You know, don't be afraid to like do something that displays your personality and who you are. You don't want to just throw something out there for the sake of throwing it out there. You want to be creative, do something that's different. Maybe do something that's in office and they have to sign up. I didn't have that in my list. They have to sign up to come in your office to learn how to, you know, I don't know, the stretches that you would need in preparation for um, birth or how to open up the pelvis or how to keep those ligaments loose and nice and, you know, flexible. Whatever it is that you're going to do to solve that problem for your ideal patient, you just do it, friend. It needs to save them time or money, solve a problem. And here's the last couple of things I'm going to leave with you today. You're probably thinking, oh my gosh, this is so much. How am I ever going to figure this out? I don't know what to do. It's going to take me too much time, blah, blah, blah. Okay, stop with all that conversation. We just took a breath a minute ago. I know I talk fast, but listen, I'm almost done. First thing, find your niche. Second thing, identify a problem. This is easy so far, right? Should be. Third thing, decide how you're going to deliver it. And then number four, write it. But here's the rule, okay? The rule is that your free lead magnet should not take your 
ideal person any longer than 10 minutes to complete or consume. So it needs to be a read that's less than 10 minutes, a video that's less than 10 minutes. Okay, less than 10 minutes to consume. And I want you to put a timer on when you sit down to write this. And it should not take you more than five hours to complete. So let's say on a Saturday, you go, okay, I know who my person is. I know who my ideal patient is. I know what I want to talk about. I know I'm going to do it as a resource guide. And I'm going to block, I'm going to sit down for three hours on a Saturday morning. I'm going to turn off my phone. I'm going to turn off all notifications. I'm going to go into silent mode and I'm going to put my head down and I'm going to start writing. There you go. You'll get it half done right then. Do not check social media, turn everything. I mean, literally power your phone off. The world is not going to die because your phone's off for a few hours. Power off your phone. Let your friends and family know I'm going head down and just get it done. But if you try to write a little bit and then you go see a patient and then you try and write a little bit more and then you have a phone call and try to write a little bit and then a notification and an email. Oh, I better respond to that email. That's crazy. You can't get anything done. You gotta be really focused on this because there's a lot writing on this. We wanna attract those ideal people into your world and you can't do this half a house. You know what I'm gonna say there. So you wanna head down and you may wanna do that over a few different days, like a couple, three hours on one day, two or three hours on the next day, but you'll get it done. Once you get it done, then you can go back, let it sit. If you got links, you may need to research some Amazon links or you wanna find Etsy links or if it's a resource guide, whatever you're gonna do, just allow yourself the time. And then remember that the first draft, the first draft isn't gonna be the perfect draft. So the faster you just get it all down on paper, the better. Then put it aside and don't look at it for oh uh, maybe three or four days. And then you're going to come back to it and you're going to go, oh, yeah, I want to do that a little different. I want to say that a little different. And you only, here's the thing, you can only allow yourself one revision. And this, I'm speaking to all you perfectionists out there. You know who you are. No, we are not revising this thing 37 times. We're going for B minus work. You've heard me say this before, B minus work on the first go. So just get something done because if you wait and you wait for it to be, per it's never going to be perfect. The world's not perfect. The air's not perfect. The water's not perfect. My hair's not perfect. I mean, really, nothing's perfect. So just get B minus work. You can only have one revision. After that one revision, done. That's it. Then you can start getting it out on social media. You can get it on your, your um, social, social media, I said, get it on your website, get it everywhere you can, talk about it, tell your patients, send an email out to your patient, your existing patients, ask them to share it. Do you know anyone who's pregnant that might want this? Here, here's a link, go or forward your email, send it to them. You can post it in pregnancy groups. You can just start getting the word out. And guess what? You're going to start attracting those ideal patients. If you have a virtual practice, works just as well as if you have a brick and mortar. There's really no difference.